Hello, San Francisco. I'm very happy to be back in the Bay Area. And today I'm talking about Democracy 2.0, Capitalism 2.0, and the next big things after super intelligence. So, whenever there is a problem in the world, business and politics have promised to fix it for us. Just hand over all the power. Uh, we've done that traditionally, um, but unfortunately, not all problems have been fixed. And that's because the problems of the world are complex. We're faced with financial, economic, and spending crisis. We're threatened by conflict and war. There's climate change that we're struggling with. And actually, the main problem is the lack of sustainability. And all these problems pose existential threats to humanity. Now, we need to have a new complementary approach and citizen science could make a big contribution because we could really massively scale up the capacity of innovation. And this is what governments have also understood in the meantime. This is a news article that appeared in US media, and it says the government wants you to help it do science and experiment, and all of us. So that was already, in a sense, the take-home message. But let us go back a few steps, because uh, we're living in the world of big data. Can big data fix all our problems? Well, of course, there's a lot of data. Within just 60 seconds, we accumulate 700,000 Google queries and 500,000 Facebook posts, and as we move, as we go shopping, that creates a lot of data. So the question came up, can we, in principle, know everything that is going on in the world in real time? No, that's the dream of some companies and governments, of course, and so the question is, can we build a crystal ball? And uh, some players are trying to do this with some success. And so the next question is, would so much information enable a wise king? <laughs> <laughs> or a benevolent dictator? Well, that sounds intriguing, but unfortunately, this magic formula that more data means more knowledge, and more knowledge means more power, and more power means more success, does not always work. And there's a reason for this. Even though actually computing capacity is increasing exponentially, that's Moore's law, uh, the amount of data that is being produced is increasing even faster. That means the percentage of data that we can ever process is going down over time. And we need to know what data to process. And that requires theory, you know, and wisdom, and there is another problem, systemic complexity is exploding even faster in a combinatorial way because we can combine existing products and services and everything. As we go on networking the world, we create this explosion, not even big data can keep up with this. So we need something better than that. And the question is, would super intelligence fix the world? I've heard a number of warnings of Elon Musk and Bill Gates uh, and other people. And that is for a reason. Of course, on the one hand, the digital revolution is on its way, and we expect that in a couple of years and decades that we would have super intelligent systems. And some people claim that will solve all our problems. But there is at least one problem that will create, which is potential mass unemployment, right? <laughs> but anyway, so we know that computers are better chess players, they're better workers in many areas. Um, they are probably better drivers, maybe better doctors, probably better in answering many questions, <laughs> not all. And so the Implication is that after the automation of production and the invention of self-driving cars, the automation of society is next. So if you want to read my reflections about it, there's a new book. And in fact, companies are working on this. They're working on an operating system for our society. 
So in this newspaper article is suggesting that IBM Watson should be the next US president. <laughs> <laughs> and Google also wants to reprogram the state. Uh, they're also working on an operating system. So the question is, could society be run like a giant machine? And if you wanted to do this, you know, we would need to know what are all these different parts and how they interact with each other and how we can manipulate them. And of course, people are working on this. Um, they're using deep learning basically to discover all these different parts and what they're doing and why they're doing it. And that includes us. That means every one of you, as you leave data traces, that's being used to have some deep learning others will learn what you do and how you can be manipulated, right? With personalized information, we're living in an attention economy and basically that allows companies and governments to steer our attention, our decision making and our behavior, at least to some extent. And if you look at these kind of pictures and now you would get the impression this remote control of people's behavior and of society is already happening. To some extent, at least. Well, but it's not totally efficient, right? So <laughs> it, it doesn't really help us to get rid of overweight and to make us kind of angels and um, take care of the environment and people in Africa and all this, you know. So uh, people are thinking about something more efficient. And that could be the citizen score, where people are rated one or several dimensions, basically in everything you do, including clicks in the internet, will create plus points or minus points, depending on whether the company or the government likes it. And China is doing this, and it will determine basically the rate you have to pay for the loan, the kind of jobs you get, and whether you can travel to visit certain countries or not. And also, what your friends do, what your family members do, would influence your score, right? So, is that the future? Well, I'd like to point out that there are limitations because big nudging and citizen scores can't do everything, right? Things related to interactions like family, friends, solidarity, social capital, culture, peace, uh, financial stability, innovation, jobs for all, it's not going to happen this way. So we need some complementary approaches. Super intelligence can fix certain things, but not everything. And we need to realize that our society is at a crossroad, so we need to take decisions. We can now build data-driven societies of different type, uh, we can kind of reinvent historical types of government. And so, in fact, in different countries, this is happening already. And we are seeing the emergence of fascism 2.0 in some countries, you know, a, a big brother society, a very new world society. Uh, but also, communism 2.0 is possible to be created in a data driven way like uh, this benevolent and dictator approach, you know, taking care of everyone and telling everyone what to do. And then there is fertilism to the oh. And that also doesn't seem to solve all our problems. So we need to remember, coming back to Einstein, that we cannot solve our problems with the same kind of thinking that created them. We need a new paradigm to fix these remaining problems. And actually, why not capitalism 2.0 and democracy 2.0? You know, something is based on bottom-up self-organization, which is efficient and flexible and adaptive and resilient, gives freedom for entrepreneurs and individuals, and really has the highest innovation rates, uh, competition for resources, and now the new stuff is network interactions dominate systemic and ecosystem thinking becomes terribly important. <clears throat> Competition is combined with cooperation, and so there is co-creation, co-revolution, collective intelligence that matters. And so we need to build the framework for this, the platforms that enable this democracy to do, the digital democracy, 
And it is really about bringing great ideas of brilliant minds together. And the important point here is it's not the best idea that wins. It's the combination of many ideas that is superior. Diversity wins, not the best. And that requires us to build online deliberation platforms that allow us to bring together all the knowledge that we have and all these ideas to come up with better solutions. Because obviously, we need better solutions to fix our problems. And in ETH Zurich, in cooperation with many other places, we've started uh, to make a contribution to this. And the project is called NervousNet. It's basically built on the Internet of Things. And the idea is that we can use the tools that we were wearing in our pockets actually uh, to open up all those centers that are in there, about 15 of them. And we can connect smartphones to build a global measurement system. We can do this, right, together. And now what would make the difference is to build a system in such a way as not only open the participator, but also a system that we can trust. And that requires to give people informational self-determination. And that is what the NervousNet project really cares about. By the way, uh, this is really a, a decentralized system. And so the idea is to run the interest of things outside of factories and means in the public space as a citizen web and to create benefits for everyone, to open up data for everyone. So what would NervousNet do for us? Actually, quite a lot of things. So, on the one hand, real time measurement, on the other hand, can create greater awareness of the chances and risks, so the implications of our decision making. Uh, we can advance science uh, towards global system science, understanding what's going in the world and why. And even more exciting, we can actually empower self organizing systems through feedback loops. And, and thereby improve systems in a bottom-up way. And finally, support collective intelligence and digital assistance. And beyond this, we, we're going one step further, and we're trying to create a core component of capitalism for uh, 2.0, which is what I call finance 4.0. And that will be a new money creation system that works in a bottom-up way, and we'll be able uh, to turn a situation where you have just a few big uh, companies that have a hell of a lot of data into a situation that creates opportunities for everyone, abundance, right? So if 50% of today's jobs are taken away or artificial intelligence in the next few years, as people say, then we need to reinvent half of our economy, right? A lot of people will have to be self-employed, come up with own companies, so we need to create opportunities. We need to empower people to build these companies. And for this, we need to create an information, innovation, production, and service ecosystem. We need to have interoperability. We need to allow for combinatorial innovation. Otherwise, we'll run in big trouble. So, summarizing. If we go on as before and believe we may end in disaster, or what could happen is loss of democracy and freedom. Uh, it could have mass unemployment, financial and economic collapse, uh, resource shortages, and serious climate change, or even global war. Super intelligence uh, will not prevent this. It can certainly make important contribution towards solving some of the problems that we have, but this is not enough. We need to digitally upgrade our economic and social system. So basically, the message is that the future is not running our society like one big machine or clockwork, but rather a networked well-coordinated distributed system of largely autonomous systems. So get ready for this illuminated age and improve the world together. Let's get started. Thank you. Yeah.